Hello, this is Steve from Beto's Leatherworks, and today's project is this cool Louis Vuitton bag. So basically what we're going to do, we're going to remake this handle, replace the binding all the way around, and give it a general cleanup, and then um, condition the parts that we're not going to replace, and just kind of moisturize them a little bit, and um, put it back into work and order. Alright, let's get started. All right, so basically we're going to start by removing the binding first, which is, the binding is this basically the edges of the purse that, that covers, so basically you got two pieces, right? They come together and it's cut off and it's raw edges. This piece of leather just covers those edges to hide the details of the edges. That's all it's here for. It doesn't, doesn't do anything else. So, but unfortunately, because it is leather over time, it's just going to wear out and it's going to fall apart. So we have to remove this binding. Man, this is dry. Look at this. Wow. We have to remove the binding to basically open the flap to go inside to see if we can remove these handle posts so we can reuse them because I don't have anything that's going to resemble that and I don't want to change them I want to reuse what we have most of the time it's it's screwed on there it's got a little screw to hold the base in but but you never know it's sometimes they're they're riveted on and once they're riveted on it's difficult to take it apart and reuse it again so so I'm gonna speed this up a little bit because again it's just it's just a matter of taking things apart. It's like watching paint dry. It's not very exciting. So, all right, let's continue. All right, very cool. So we got lucky. There are screws right there. So we can unscrew that and then get to, get to the post that we can remove that. This, uh, this bag, when it was sent in, I evaluated it and um, I gave a couple of options to the customer. And, um, and they decided to not do all the leather on there so so for example the flat the flap strap right here we're going to keep this is very cool i'm so excited that i can reuse these sometimes these can be a really pain in the butt if it's riveted on there it just makes it for a lot more work and then and then you might not be able to reuse it again so anyway so we gave the customer some options they chose they chose one of the options and and it wasn't for all replacing all the leather on there right so I think the estimate was about seven hundred dollars which was option B option A was a little bit more to redo everything um, so I think now that I'm now that I'm working on it I mean it's gonna look it's going to look kind of like a um, patched piece together because the new leather I'm going to put on, obviously it's new leather. It's not old, you know, 30 years old, 40 years old, whatever, how old, however old this is. No matter how much I tint it, you know, dirty it up, oil it, it's still going to be new leather compared to old leather. Okay? So, I think I'm just going to just go ahead and do whatever needs to be done and change all the leather on there and just kind of surprise the customer yeah it's 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 a little bit more work for me you know but but i think overall once it's done like for example right we have to make a new handle um they opt out of making a new strap just oiling it down but i mean it's it's pretty bad 
So for me to do just what they want me to do and then send this back, look at this thing. Send it back like this. I mean, oil down, I'll clean it up and, and put some creams and soften it up a bit, but you still can't change those cracks. Those are going to remain there. I don't think it would be very professional of me to, to do it like that and just send it out. So I think I'm going to, uh, I think I'm going to go ahead and and just change everything. Well, I'm not going to change this one right here. That's the interior pocket surrounding. That's going to remain the same. But as far as this, this right here, the binding all the way around, and then a new handle and a new shoulder strap. I think it might not be a bad idea just just to do it and and be done with it. So. So that'll be a good surprise for the customer. All right, let's continue. So we took the handle apart here. So most of the time that what you're gonna find on the inside is, is paper. That's all it is. It's fiberboard. And over time of that, that flexing right there, which is, needs to be structural, it breaks. So what we're going to do, we're going to make a new handle. It'll be in two pieces, of course. It'll be a bottom and a top. And the inside will be a piece of thick leather to give it that nice shape. You see how that's kind of concave and round? And, and then in between all those, there'll be a nylon piece that's going to act as a structural support. So over time, well, I mean, look. This has got to be, what, 30 years old? So if it lasted this long, it's not bad, right? But still, there should have been something at this at this point where it flexes all the time. So the leather doesn't, it doesn't, um, it's not kind of, um, it's not, it doesn't change the shape of the leather and stretch and, and fall apart. So a couple of little minor details like that, you know, it, it would make it last a lot longer. Well, again, I mean, how long do we want something to last, you know? If it's going to last 30, 40 years, it's not bad. So, a couple of structural issues here and there will make it a little bit more better. All right, let's continue. Now, we've got, we've got pretty much all the leather cut out, right? Now, this is, as you can see, it's natural finish. There's no, there's no finish on here. And um, I think Louis Vuitton calls this Vachetta leather. It's a natural leather where there's no... There's no dyes or um, or oils, so they've left that unfinished. Now, sometimes when we are just doing part of the bag, we have to tint that leather down to somewhat similar shade or close to possible as the original. Now, I've tried the several ways of doing this. Um, creams, different shades, just to kind of tint it a little bit, a little bit of yellow here, to give it that little yellow hue. Um, I've used the Phoebe's dye also, airbrushed it on there, and like a tan color, but I don't want it to be that dark, so I wanted to kind of leave it semi-natural, because since we're replacing everything on the bag, I figured, you know what, maybe tint it a little bit, but not too much to a point where it's too dark like the original. Now, the only part that is not going to be replaced is going to be the inside part like we talked about. So, it's kind of safe to say that even if the new leather is a little lighter than the inside piece, it's okay. Since that's on the inside, it's not going to be visible when she's wearing it. All right, so now we just have to kind of uh, come to somewhat of a happy medium to tint all this down and to give it some um, give it some shade to it, so it's not so bright like that. All right, let's continue. Now the creams aren't dyes, okay, but they've got enough pigments in there to to change the color a little bit. And then once everything is kind of dry, what we'll do is um, we'll apply some conditioners so that that color, that shade will stay. We're going to water repel it afterwards. 
I think once it gets assembled and it gets done, I think it'll look really nice. Just didn't care for that that um, that bright unfinished leather. It just kind of stands out too much. Plus, this way, what we're doing now is um, is actually sealing it just a little bit so it doesn't get dirty as fast. Because man, this is this is like it's like a sponge basically, right? That bright leather is going to absorb all sorts of dirt very quickly. Oh, I had uh, I had a bunch of visitors. Three couples, uh, four couples, four couples, not not all at the same time. They just happened to. They just happened to show up and said, you know, we, we we're in town and um, we watch you on YouTube and um, we're big fans. I was really, really, I was like, really? You came to see me? <laughs> you know? So it was really cool. Now, I, I couldn't post pictures of them. Some of them didn't want their faces to be plastered all over YouTube. But uh, I appreciated that so much. They took the time and off their vacation, I guess they were close by. They said, We're going to go see Steve. That's really cool. And uh, one of them gave me a hat from his town, which was really, really cool. I'm getting a lot of feedback from my YouTube channel. Which is unbelievable, and some of them are like close by. They're not. They're not far from here, but they didn't. They didn't know that we were here. You know. Now we've been in Falls Church, where I am now, for um, almost 42 years now. My dad started it in '77 down the street, a small little shop. So we've been. You know, we've been around for a long time, but. I don't really do advertising. It's just I can barely keep up with the work as is. It's just for me to advertise, you know. So that's why some people don't know me who who live close by. It's kind of cool that they're surprised that I'm so close, you know. I'm like, "Yep, yeah, I'm here." So lately I've been um taking me a little bit longer to get the work done and I can only do so much but I, I you know I make time to to take in work as best as I can and try to schedule things I have two I have two kids who are helping me now brother and sister they're doing pretty good working in the front counter taking care of customers telephone I don't have a full time yet, permanent full time, but keep on looking. It's okay. All right, so the leather has been tinted. Let's just say tinted. This cream is Colonel. Okay, and I believe this is a German product, if I'm not mistaken. And I'm pretty happy with it. It works out pretty good. So now, once this dries, we'll buff it again. We're going to spray it with the, actually we're going to condition it first, and then we're going to spray it with the water repellent. I like doing this um, just to, um, you know, before assembling it, just to, on one hand, it, it stays clean as I'm working on it, you know, and, um, and it gives it a little bit of protection. And once we assemble everything, we're going to finish the edges and, and then put it to the bag. All right, let's continue. All right, so we got this piece done, the buckle piece. Now, if you now some people say that the originality of the bag is lost, I agree. But at this stage, there's not much you can do with this bag. Louis Vuitton does not touch jobs like this. Okay, so the next best thing is to get it done and have the customer use it again. Okay, so for all those oh, those of you who say, well, it's not a Louis Vuitton bag anymore, 
you know what? You keep your bag the way you want it, dust cover and all on the top shelf, and let these customers use it the way they want it when they're enjoying themselves. Now, this piece here has a little serial number there. See that right there? Is it blurry? So what I did was I took that and stamped that. Let me see if I can bring it to show it to you guys. Well, there goes the camera. Where is it at? Try this again. <laughs> there you go. You see it? Okay. So it's the same number as the original one. It's um, SL0971. I can probably decode that somewhere online. Maybe it was made in 97. I'm not sure. All right. So as you see, we're we're slowly, slowly making progress. This is the first step, and once this is done. I can go ahead and close the sides and the lining in and then um, then I can focus on making a handle, doing the binding, and then finishing it up. Well, easier said than done. All right, let's continue. All right, so we've got the handle apart. And, and I know it's just a handle, but this is kind of complicated. There's lots of, there's lots of pieces that, that need to be done right or else this is not going to look good. We've got the bottom piece. This is a fiber board right here, just to give it some thickness. This is the leather insert that's going to give it that hump shape. This is the nylon piece that's going to give it them some strength. And this is the top piece right there. So once everything comes together, we hope it looks like a handle. All right, I'm going to speed this up a little bit while I'm uh, while I'm doing this. So. Doesn't take so long. All right, let's continue. All right, so we got the handle together. Now we're gonna run a stitch right along the edge, cut the excess off, sand it, trim it, put some edge dressing on it, and we'll be done with the handle. All right, let's continue. All right, so we got the handle. That still needs to be kind of touched up here and there. Sanded edges make it a little bit even everywhere. But as you can see, I mean, it's not bad. It looks pretty good. I think once it gets done, it's gonna look phenomenal. All right, let's continue.
so we've got the handle made now this goes through this metal reinforcement right here which basically gives it the support for the for the handle now these are screwed on right there's two screws that are holding the two posts the handle posts on this is what the shoulder straps connect to also hold the handle to the bag now when the screws are in the you know the, the flap is closed and stitched on so this screw is very important that it doesn't come loose if it comes loose you got to take the binding off you got to take everything apart just to get to the screw so what we're going to do is we're going to get a little loctite this is basically um, thread locker red I think most mechanics use this for um, making sure that the bolts don't come loose again when they're putting you know things together so we're just going to put a little drop in there that's all you need I don't know if you can see that or not you see that so basically that's going to act as glue once it um, once it tightens up and dries that's not going to come off by itself so this way this is sure that this piece that we're putting on does not come off or loosen up that we don't have to open the whole thing up again just to get to the screw it's, it's a little detail but man it's so crucial that that you know you tighten this up and and um, you don't want that to come loose again now if you have to loosen it up it will loosen up it's not like crazy glue or anything where once you know once it's on there it's going to stay there but it won't come it won't undo itself with with pressure and that's it I think it turned out very nice I like it okay so once that's done we're going to work on this front piece here once we stitch this to the flap then we can close everything up we can put the binding on, make the shoulder strap, and we are done. All right, well, a little bit more to go. Okay, let's continue. All right, so we got the center flap strap ready. The buckle's done. The handle's done. So we're getting there. Now we're going to assemble it back. Then um, we're going to put the binding on. And we're almost there. All right, let's continue. getting there. Let's continue. All right, so we're almost uh, we're almost there. We've got the shoulder strap done. Okay. Didn't turn out too bad. We got the handle done, front strap, buckle strap. Now this is the binding that's going to go around the edges. Basically, I cut a strip of leather. I skived it which means I thinned it about half thickness of what it was because there's no way you're going to be able to bend that in half like that when it's that thick. I've marked the edges. See that silver line right there? So what I'm going to do, I'm going to come and glue that right on the on the line and fold it over. It should be in the center of that leather piece. Okay? Now this gets a little tricky because manufacturers use um, little attachments on their machines, so on their sewing machines. So 
the binding is dead center on the bag. You know, I have some of those attachments, but by the time I set it up on the machine, you know, it'll be tomorrow. So I'm going to do this freehand, basically. So once it's glued on there, now what I did was, there's a seam right here. You see that? Because um, the leather was not long enough to do one piece. So what we're going to do, we're going to take that seam and we're going to hide it right underneath that strap right there, right in the center. So once it gets done, you won't see any seams at all. It looks, it'll look like it's one piece all together. All right. All right. So let's continue. This is my um, cylinder arm machine. Um, it's not a bad machine, but it's not what I expected when I bought it. It came with a wrong tabletop. It's not supposed to have a tabletop. So I had to cut out this, this area right here so I can kind of maneuver shoes or bags or whatever I had to do. And um, But I had it for about three months before I opened the box up. And it was just a little too late for me to you know, to return it, you know, so I'm like, all right, whatever, I'll improvise. You can't stitch this type of a job on a flatbed, you know, so you have to have a, you have to have a cylinder arm like this. And this is not really meant for heavy, you know, work. This is considered kind of a little heavy for this machine. But, you know, we're going to have to make it work. That's all I got. See what it did? This is not good. So I've got to basically re-thread it again and, and kind of start over in a certain spot. And I'm kind of glad it did that because it, it buckled up in the back. So I got to take it apart and, and redo it there. So, kind of a blessing in disguise. All right, let's continue. Of all the times that, that the machine should act up, it acts up on the area that is so visible, the binding, it's right in front of you. There's nothing there to hide. It's not like it's an inside stitch or anything where you, you, know, you, don't have, you can't see the detail. And it started acting up on me. Ah, so, it was gonna be a two minute job, it turned out to be about 20 minutes trying to adjust a couple things here and there and re-threading the needle a couple of times. That's okay. At the end it'll be okay. Once I clean it up a little bit, you know, clean the thread up. Yeah, it'll be fine. Maybe it's because of the thread. I'm not sure. Wrong size needle? I don't know. It's getting late. I need to finish this. So now we get to kind of clean up the thread, hammer the stitches down, flatten them down. Um, I think we're almost done. So maybe just clean the surface a little bit, some, some white marks, and um, we'll be ready to go. All right, let's continue. All right, we are done with another project. It didn't turn out too bad. I think my favorite part is, is the handle. This handle turned out, I, I thought, I think it turned out really nice. Very cool looking, I like it. And of course the new bindings all the way around. The front strap, the buckle strap, the shoulder strap. Everything's brand new now in this bag. So the only thing that it's not, it's not uh, changed is is the interior zipper lining area there. I think it's okay, it's on the inside, that'll be fine. I mean, if I was doing the lining, maybe I would have replaced that too, but the lining is in good shape, so we'll leave that alone. 
So I'm glad it's done finally. I think it turned out good. I think the customer is going to be very happy and surprised once uh, once she receives it. This was a mail-in order. Um, this was a $700 job. I quoted her two um, two options. One was about almost a thousand, maybe a little over a thousand. That included the shoulder strap and the front straps. That was she didn't think it was necessary, but you know it's okay. I um, I just couldn't let it go because it needed to be replaced. You know, you saw earlier how cracked the handles were, the strap was. I mean, it, it's got some life on it, but my God, I would I would not leave this like this with the rest of the leather trim all brand new. Now, had I left this, I would have tinted the leather down even darker to uh, to match that. But with this, over time, it'll get a nice patina to it, so it's still new, and it's kind of bright on the, in the camera, but it looks pretty good in, uh, when you're looking at it. So today was not, it was an iffy day today. I don't know why. I was just not feeling, feeling, you know, 100% into the job. Even though I was thinking about it all night, I wanted to finish it. But once I started, my mind just wandered off a couple of times. Maybe that's the reason that I couldn't stitch it earlier, that the thread broke a couple of times. And um, was just not was just not into it as much as I usually am, but I think it turned out good overall. So I'm glad you're joining me. Um, now, if you guys want to have um, if you have any questions, please email me at beatos at yahoo.com. Sometimes I don't see the comments with questions in there. I'm not ignoring it. So if you have a specific question about a repair, you can email me beatos at yahoo.com and yes we do take in mail orders i get that asked all the time most of these jobs are mail orders so all right thanks for watching again comment all you want share negative positive whatever you want doesn't matter all right we'll see you again take care